This is a quick walk walkthrough on how to install Fedora 20. Um, here on the screen you can see that I've already booted into the Netboot ISO. Uh, I choose the Netboot ISO because it's small um, and I'm going to install what I consider to be the server installation for Fedora which is a fairly minimal install and it doesn't need all the packages that come in the big DVD ISO. So I just do the Netboot um, ISO and let it download the packages that are needed. Um, so we'll just walk through this real quick. Um, here you can see um, this is the Anaconda installer and there are a number of, these are called installation spokes. Um, the idea here is this is not a linear installer like you might have seen in Debian or Windows or anything else. Um, you can see all the things that need to be done as part of the installation process on this one screen. Um, I'm not sure if I like it or not, but this is the way it's done. Um, the things that need attention have the exclamation points, um, but you probably want to go through each of these uh, individually anyway to ensure that they're set properly for you. So I'll set the time. I'm in the central time zone. Uh, keyboard English, English, good. Um, so here under software selection, we don't want the full GNOME desktop. We're just going to be trying to do a headless server install. So that really trims down the number of packages we need. So if we scroll down to the bottom of this base environment list, you can see a minimal installation. And then I also like to install the standard set of common utilities. Um, just because the, the minimal install really is very minimal. And some of the utilities that you'd expect to be there are not there but with the standard package they are. Um, the next thing to check out is the installation destination. Um, it'll have, in this case, I've got one hard drive here. Um, when you click done, it'll ask you whether you want to do the automatic partitioning or whatever else. Um, I like to do uh, basic standard um, partition. So I'm going to go, I want to I want to review it and standard partition and then do continue. This takes me into the partition manager here. Um, so I like to start off with uh, doing the create uh, the partitions automatically and then tweak them from there. So um, this is actually pretty close to what I would install. Typically um, the, the swap by default is a percentage of the drive. Um, I just like to cap it at two gigs. So you can change it there. You can go into the desired capacity, type in two gigs, hit update settings, and you see that the swap drive has changed to two gigs now. Now you have some uh, unused space in the partition table. I, you can go into the, your root directory now, and instead of typing in an exact number, trying to figure out exactly what it was, you can just type in 100%, and it'll use all remaining space for your root um, partition. So that looks good. Well, uh, this shows all the changes that it's going to make, except um, in here, if you have um, a static IP or something like that, you need to change your DNS servers, um, then you can go in here and, and change those here. There's a configure button. You can click here and you can change IPv4, IPv6 settings, whatever you like to, uh, to fit your particular need. Also tucked away down here, I didn't notice this the first few times, is the host name. So you can set the host name during installation right down here. So we don't have any more exclamation points on any of the spokes. That means we're cleared to install. You can hit begin installation down here in the lower uh, right corner. So it will stall, it'll start the installation process down here. Um, if you you know, if this is a test machine or something like that, and you don't care about uh, the root, uh, you don't care about security, having the root uh, account enabled, you can set the root password here, or you can create an administrative user over here, in which case the root account won't have a password, and the only way to access root privileges will be through sudo using this user. So we can just come in here, we'll on default. And uh, if you're going to do that, make sure you check make this user administrator and then give it a password this one will be really weak since the demo now when you hit done here this was pretty confusing at first here I hit done it didn't do anything um, well in this case my passwords don't match the any error messages actually appear at the very bottom of the screen so if you're clicking a button and it's not doing what you expect check the bottom of the screen for any error messages
Okay, so now my passwords match, but it says my password is weak. So if I hit done, it actually comes up with an error message saying you provide a weak password, press done again to use it anyway. So hit done again. And you'll see the progress bar down here at the bottom is gonna install all the packages and it'll just go and go and go. At the end, there'll be a reboot button right here. Just click that and you'll reboot into your new Fedora installation. Now, obviously we didn't install a graphical environment so it will come up to the console, um, which in my case is what I want. But um, this is a way to install Fedora in kind of a server configuration analogous to the Ubuntu server installation or whatever. Uh, hope this was helpful.